Are you constantly struggling to find the right balance between warmth and weight when you're going on a hike? I used to. Today, I am diving into the world of fleece pullovers, jackets, you name it. Fleece has been a constant partner in my 30 year hiking journey. So come along on a journey with me, see the fleeces I've used over the years, and I'll show you also what my favorite one is right now that comes on pretty much every hike. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Mouser here, and if you're new here, then on this channel, we just explore everything hiking, gear, Tasmania, Australia, anything like that at all. Now I've been hitting the trails for 30 years now. That's quite a while, isn't it? 30 years, and there is one companion that has been through pretty much every trip with me. It changes its face occasionally, but you can guarantee pretty much every trip I go on, there's one item that always come. It's been through thick and thin with me, and that is my fleece. From my heavy duty Paddy Pallon Inferno that I used to take back in the early days, right through to my Patagonia R1, R2, R3, Patagonia R series, we'll call it. Let's dive into the world of fleece and how I use it in my kit to keep me warm and keep me protected from the elements. And before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate it. And you can also sign up to our newsletter, which comes out every month. Next one's coming out very soon. And that'll pop up on the screen here, a little QR code or something like that will pop up there. You can sign up to the newsletter. Let's get straight into the video. Let's go in and look at the world of fleece. So before we dive into the detail, let's have a look at what actually is polar fleece. What is this fabric I speak of? So polar fleece, in case you didn't know, is popular due to its warmth, softness, and lightweightness. Lightweightness, is that a word? It's lightweight properties. Now polar fleece has only been around almost the same amount of time as I have been. It was first developed in 1979 by a company in America in the United States called Molden Mills, or Molden Mills, and they developed this fabric and called it Politech. Now the fabric itself, it's little strands, little yarns woven from a product called polyester, which is derived from plastic. So Molden Mills made this stuff. Then a client of theirs came along, a mob that you may have heard of by the name of Patagonia, and they started producing garments with this new fabric and they called theirs Cinchilla, and the Cinchilla garments still exist today in the Patagonia lineup. And the, the good thing about this material is that it is hydrophobic. That means it doesn't like water. So it won't hold on to water if it's raining, if it's getting wet. So like I've said with cotton before, that retains moisture and water and gets heavier. This stuff will actively sort of repel it, I guess, hydrophobic. And it will only hold up to sort of 1% of its weight in water, which is extremely small. Whereas if you look at a fabric like cotton, which I'm not going into detail again today, but that can hold, some people say, sort of up to 24 to 28 times its own weight in water and you really don't want that when you're hiking so even when it does get a bit wet because it does still get a little bit wet it is still really good at insulating you which makes it a great hiking garment so it's a great option for people who are allergic or sensitive to wool not as much of a problem these days but it is good for those people and due to the fact that it is base sort of material is plastic it can be made from things like plastic bottles so you know a lot of these companies in the 90s started releasing products patagonia places like that started releasing products made from recycled plastic bottles but that has raised some environmental concerns because you get this thing called microfiber shedding when it gets washed in the washing machine some of the small percentage of the fibers can come loose and come away from the garment and end up in wastewater. So companies like Patagonia now are looking at alternative options, how to make fleece. They're even looking at trying to make it from recycled wool and things like that. But having said that, I have been using the fleece for pretty much my entire hiking career since about 1994. And it was around that time that I bought my first fleece. And that was this one, the Paddy Pallon Inferno. Now, for those who are overseas who don't know Paddy Pallon, Big hiking chain here in Australia, very popular gear. They make high quality garments, that sort of thing. And back then in about 94, one of the first purchases I made, one of the big investments I made was this nice warm fleece weighing in at a hefty 750 grams. Now this thing was awesome. It came on every walk with me for at least 10 years, if not longer. And I've talked about this one before briefly in other videos, but this is it, the Paddy Pellon Inferno, and it's still going strong. 30 years after I first purchased it, it is still quite warm, very, could easily stand up to a trip out in the wilderness still. It's a great jacket. So it stood with me for a long time. It was like wrapping yourself up in a nice warm blanket when you put it on, and it still is now. It's a great jacket, but 
as I got a little older, I wanted some lighter weight options. And that's where I made one of my first Patagonia purchases, the Patagonia R2 Fleece Jacket. Now I purchased this jacket just prior to a 13 day odyssey through the entire Arthur Ranges here in Tasmania. And the entire time it pretty much snowed and rained the entire trip. And when I used this in combination with my layering system, check out my layering video up there, this thing was a game changer for me on that trip. It was lightweight. I was wet the whole trip. It still kept me warm. I could have this on. I'd get to camp and I'd often be hiking in this jacket on that trip because it was really cold. This would be damp when I got into tent, into the tent, the tent, into tent. What am I talking about? When I got into my tent, I could leave this on. It would dry out very quickly because it was just slightly damp. Body heat would dry it out and I wore it the entire trip and loved it for years and I gave it a pretty hard beating over the years. So I found myself wearing this all the time and it sort of started to wear through after a couple of years. I still keep it now in my garage for wearing outside in the garden and when I'm going on a walk of an evening and that sort of thing. But in the meantime, I started looking for a few other options. Now for a brief period, I moved over to a wind stopper style fleece. Now, the advantage with this, obviously, for obvious reasons, it stops wind. So it was good on those cold, brisk, windy days. The downside of this is that it is not as thick, not as insulating, I don't think, if it's just cold. So I wore this on quite a few trips. I used to wear it as a guide. It was a good uh, pullover, this one. Good pockets. Again, Paddy Pallon, and I enjoyed this one, but it just didn't offer the insulation that I wanted. So after a few years, we had another look at another Patagonia product. And that's when I moved up to the Patagonia R3. I think this was a reversible full jacket. So the full jacket again with a hood. And this came on quite a few trips as well. Although it was quite a bit heavier than that first one. And it didn't seem to offer the same level of insulation to me. This feels a bit thinner, slightly different sort of structure to that other one. I did like it though. It's, it's a nice jacket and it still gets some wear now. So that didn't last a great deal of time. I thought, what the hey, I liked the R2 the first time, so I went down again, got myself another R2, and this one I've been wearing right up until today. I still wear it regularly, mainly for day walks these days. This one, it's a good, nice, thick fleece, and it's not too thick though. I could wear this walking if I had to. It combines really well with a layering system of thermals, really good for that, and it's quick drying, does all that same stuff, and it just feels a bit nicer and fluffier than that original one that I had, and I love these Patagonia jackets. But you know, I'm I'm never satisfied, I guess. I'm always looking for lighter gear. I'm looking for stuff that's 100 grams lighter. That's where I'm at in my world at the moment. I'm just trying to lessen my pack weight wherever I can, so I can still take some little luxuries along with me as well. And then one day, a particular fleece caught my eye. And that was this one, another Patagonia one again, but I can't go past the Patagonia fleece. I love them, I think they're awesome. And this is a pullover. So it's a, the just a long zip on it and it's tight fitting. It's an R1, what's it called? What's it called again? It's the R1 pullover hoodie. And I have had this for about six or seven years. It is really good. It's got a hoodie. I have had this out on some crazy weather days. It zips right up like that. And so I've got almost like a balaclava I can wear. And I have been known to wear this with my thermal layer underneath, with my insulating layer over the top, and with my shell on. And I have been just right on some of those horrendous hiking days that I've experienced. And this comes with me on every single trip now of multi-day nature. This comes every time. I don't wear this any other time. I only wear it on those big trips because I want it to last because you can't get these in Australia anymore. I have, do find the occasional one on a website. There are similar things out there by people like Arcteryx. Patagonia do make one which is a pullover which doesn't have the hood. I will put links to that down below if I can find them. But yeah, this is my go-to at the moment. And what I most love about these, just the quick drying nature of them and the fact that it can be pouring the rain, I can just get this out of the pack and put it on quickly. And this is a good one to hike in first thing in the morning when it's quite cool. You don't want to have your hard shell on. You don't want your thicker insulation layer like your synthetic or your down jacket on. You just want something that's just going to keep you warm for a little bit. And I will put this on over a t-shirt when I'm heading out to camp and just heading off in the morning and take it off after 20 minutes half an hour it's a good way to start the day and i really appreciate that at 334 grams this one is i think it's pretty good value for what i need it for and that is sort of where i've got to 
in my fleece journey until now. And the main thing I would say about fleece is that you don't rely on that one piece of clothing to keep you warm. You use it in combination with your layering system. You use it in combination with your thermals, with your insulation layer and with your shell. And I find that that works really well for me. It's a really good system. And it, it has been my sort of secret weapon against unpredictable weather in the last few years is using this layering system effectively and taking the clothes on and off as I get warmer or as I get colder, doing it the moment I feel I need to get it on or off, I do it there and then, and I'm able to stay quite comfortable and fairly dry on the track. And if you're not wanting to carry something quite as heavy as that, then there is ones like this that I picked up recently, which is a very thin fleece from a company called MacPack here in Australia. And that's only about 130 grams, I think, that shirt. And it's almost like a thermal shirt, but it's just a lightweight fleece. That might make an appearance on some coming walks very soon. Very good option if you don't want to go the full fleece. But there you go, that's a wrap up of my fleeces. If you found this video helpful, then go ahead and look up there and I will go through all of my jackets and insulating layers that I have gone through over the years. We'll have a look at them, get into that video, and I'll take you through the jackets, the down, the synthetic jackets that I wear in combination with this layering and the fleece system. So until the next time, enjoy that one, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.